We're going to read the Bible in two books. In the Old Testament, in Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And then Revelation, Genesis 2, verse 7, then Revelations, last book of, of the Bible, that's right, Revelation 2. 7? No. Genesis 2, 7. Thank you, my brother. In Revelation 2, I'm going to read verse 8 and 11. Let's begin with the first, right? 2, 7 says the following. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being now in Revelations 2 verse 8 and to the angel of the church in Smyrna writes these things say the, the, says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. Now verse 11, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Lord, we pray so that you uh, bless us and bless your your word so that you may bless your people through, through it. And we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The brethren may sit down. The Bible says Jesus he was the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That's why tonight we're going to use two books of the Word of the Lord. The first book of the, the Bible, Genesis, and the last one of the Bible, Revelations. And we know that God, through the Lord Jesus, He is present in the entire Bible. The Word says that we need to examine. Jesus himself gives an advice. Exam examine the scriptures because they testify of me. And you will have life and eternal life. First verse that we read speaks to us about the earthly life that the Lord has given us. And you who are here tonight, each one of us, one day we thought that we had life. I have life. But it's not exactly like that. The Word tells us that God didn't give life to men. God gave the breath of life and it's very different. One thing to the other. The breath of life it lasts a determined period of time. And we as men, we live inside of the time. So, in a determined period of time, this time for us will end. And we will die. Because it's determined in the word of the Lord that every man shall die. The dust will come back to the earth and the spirit is going to go back to God because it belongs to him. Who amongst us has experience with diving? If you dive in a river or in, or in the sea, and you see that the breath of the, the person is different. There are people that can stay five seconds underwater, a minute, two, three, who has a lot of prepare to do this, can go even beyond that. People, they sometimes they die 
100 years, 110, 70 years, 50, 20. They are the ones that go, they are too hasty and they go even sooner. So the breath goes away. And Jesus, he came to show that there is a life beyond this life. And more than that, he came to, sh to give a gift to us with this life and his ministry, the Lord Jesus. He came to his disciples, to the multitude, and he says the following, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If each, everyone here had life, Jesus would not have come to make a proposal uh, like this sort, because it's not natural that somebody to offer to you and to me what you already have. So Jesus came to show that we have a breath of life. And if you analyze, it's good to be alive, right? Who wants to die here? Raise your hand. And the Lord knows that. He knows that every one of us, each one of us wants to live. And more than that, the desire of the Lord is that everyone, everyone leaves. The Bible says that the Lord has no pleasure in the death of those that die. You know why? Because the ones that die, they don't praise the name of the Lord. But those of us who are alive, they praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, Lord God gave the breath of life to every man including Jesus himself that was born also uh, of a woman a human and we see in the book of Revelations that this Jesus he came to his church and he says the following I am the first and the last I'm the beginning of the creation of God and I'm the end of all creation so when we are born we're born and this is the beginning of our lives Jesus is present that's why the Bible says let the children come to me because from them is the kingdom of God so when we die the desire of the Lord that in this instant the Lord Jesus is also able to be present the Lord Jesus says the following who dies uh, he is the one who died and was risen from the dead Jesus died it is a fact if you take uh, Isaiah 53 you will see also at the end of the book of Matthew the suffering, the anguish, the sadness, the pain, the humiliation that Jesus had to go through, and death. Death brings all of it, anguish, pain, suffering, and humiliation. And he went through all those things for you, for me, in order for us not to have to go through this. That's why Isaiah 53 says he took upon himself our pains and our sins were carried upon him. He was afflicted, wounded by God, and oppressed. The sin which was for us that bring us peace was upon him. And here we see the manifestation of the great love of God towards our lives, my brother and sister, towards the life of each man. Because the word says the following, because God loved the world so much in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him 
do not perish but have eternal life. So he speaks of another life, the life, the eternal life. So it is about this topic that we are talking about tonight with you, my brother and sister, the desire that the Lord has to give to you eternal life. The Bible says that God is great in advice and um, wonderful in power. My brother and sister, take the advice, uh, the advice of the Lord. If you if you have ears, so now listen to what the Spirit is speaking to you tonight. God wants to give you eternal life because your breath, your breath, one day it will run out in the same way that my breath will also run out as also the breath of every living creature will run out so before your breath and my breath runs out we have to make a decision in our lives where do we want to spend eternity because the the body it will die it will just disappear but the soul that is within us is eternal. And Jesus says the following, the one who died and uh, came back to life. So he speaks of death and also about resurrection. Jesus came to the woman, the Samaritan woman, and the Lord wants to speak, spe Lord wants tonight to speak, especially with a woman. And Jesus told her, the, this woman, if you drink the water that I give you, will, there will be a, a fountain that will take you to eternal life. So, in other words, you will jump over death. Death will no longer have a power over your life. When Jesus was being crucified, was that was exactly what happened. Jesus was to the point of dying death was coming closer to him. So when we realized that he was going to depart, he did something very, very interesting. Before death came to him, he said, Father, I hand to you my spirit. Death didn't have power upon the Lord Jesus. Jesus didn't die. He died to save you, to save me, to, so to save us. Death didn't have power upon Jesus. And this is the message of Jesus Christ to your life and to my life tonight. If you accept Jesus, death will have no power upon your life. The Bible says, your death was uh, taken away. Where is hell? your shackles. When we accept Jesus, death and hell, they lose. You know that your desire and my desire and everyone's desire is not to die and much less to go to hell. Who wants to go to hell? Raise your hand. No one. Why? Because the situation there is not very good. If it was good, it wouldn't have this name. If you say heaven, then it's good. New Jerusalem is excellent. Tree of life? That's great. The word says that everything that God does is good. The six days of creation, God saw that it was good, it was good, it was good. When God created us, God said that he thought it was very good. And the book of Psalms, it says that, that God is good. And God brought you tonight so you can experience this goodness of God towards your life. God says the following. He, will, he died and, and he, he was revived. You know what the Lord Jesus says? The one who believes in me, even if, if he's already dead, we will live again. And he says the following, Who has ears? Listen to what the Spirit 
says to the church. This is the message of the Holy Spirit to all the churches, to all the peoples, to all the tongues, and to all, all the tribes, and to all the nations. And it also says that when this word was uh, was spread to all of those that I just mentioned, then the fi the end will come. So Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. On the back of uh, of our songbook, I I was dead and I thought that I was alive. Sometimes man is in this situation. He is dead and he thinks that he's uh, living. He thinks that he has life, but he just has a breath of life. Life, life is Jesus. If you have Jesus, uh, if I have Jesus, I have life, and a life that never runs out, a life uh, for eternity. That's the desire of the Lord for you. And it says the following: Whoever is victorious is not going to receive the de the curse of the second death. Here we have a guarantee from God, because the first death, if the rapture does not come in a few days, I know that I will go away. My breath of life will runs out, will run out. So the body will have to be uh, have to perish. But my soul, as I mentioned, the hell and death will not have power over it, because I already have given my soul and my life to God through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But it says the Bible says about being victorious. I will not receive the the curse of the second death if I win if I lose I lost salvation I will go through the curse of the second death but if I win if I'm victorious I'm not going to go through this curse in the same way that you my brother and sister will not go through this situation but you have to be victorious but now explain to me how am I going to be victorious over death, over hell? How am I going to be victorious uh, over the things of this life? I don't have the means to do this. I don't know if any of you have the means to do this. I don't have the means. So I need some help. I need someone that is uh, uh, beside me, that is stronger than I, the, and that is stronger than death, and that is stronger than hell. That's why on the scriptures it is said, we are more than victorious through the one who loved us. So I am victorious, I will be victorious on all of the things, I'm not going to go through the damage of the second death if in my life there is the presence of God because God is stronger stronger than all all of those things so when I accept Jesus in my life I accept the presence of Him, of the Holy Spirit upon me so I have now power and I can say authority over death and over hell not because I have power but because this power was given to me through the person the Lord of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so in order for me to be victorious I need the presence of Jesus in my life I need the presence of the Holy Spirit upon my life there is a man in the Bible called Samson and Samson Samson was a man that was very ripped. He had uh, some strength. But when we read in the Bible, 
he went to uh, fight against the lion. The lion was going to kill Samson. But when the lion presented in the, uh, and to face Samson, the lion was his death. So then the Spirit of God took power greatly on him and they took the lion and ripped him from top to bottom. A thousand men went to f uh, fight against Samson. He was going to lose that battle. He took uh, the jaw of a uh, donkey. Well, it was not the, the jaw of the donkey that uh, delivered Samson. Because the Bible says that the Spirit of God, once again, took control of Samson. And he there, the strength that God had given to him, he was able to be victorious against 1,000 soldiers. And that's why the Lord tells us to the one that is victorious, he will not receive the damage of the second death. S in order for my soul not to have eternal death, I need the presence of God, I need the presence of the Holy Spirit, I need the presence of Jesus in my life. And Lord has shown tonight a woman. She is having a lot of difficulty in walking the presence of the Lord. And she has already come um, many times in the house of the Lord. But she has not m uh, made a decision, a definition to be here with us. And tonight, the Lord brought you once again to this place to give you this opportunity for you to understand that He has a project of eternal life. It's not a life of breath, 10, 20, 30 years, my brother, sister, but it's an eternal life, a life that never runs out. That's what the Lord has prepared for your life. The Lord also sh has shown tonight a person, a woman, and this woman also for six times the Lord has spoken to her life, spoken to her heart, has revealed to this uh, lady a product that he has of eternal life for her, but she has been resistant and she still don't, doesn't think that it is not the right time to make a definition in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord is showing tonight, is you want to give you an advice, my sister? That is give you yet another opportunity and he's giving you the last opportunity if tonight if you lose your soul it's going to be lost to home if you hear my voice do not harden your heart this is an advice of the Lord towards your life and this is very important is very important. The Lord is giving you your last opportunity. In a few minutes I will leave this church. I don't know what's going to happen to me in 30 seconds. But I'm sure of one thing. If I leave, I'll continue living for Christ. And if I die, I will die, but I will continue living with Christ. You need to make this definition to have this assurance in your life and in your heart. Amen.
Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be your name, Lord. That's what the Lord is prepared. For your love, my brother and sister. Our God is, uh, um, is a mighty God. Must be the name of the Lord.
church will stand up. Now we're going to have a word of duration to the Lord. Well, at this time, we glorify your name. We praise your name because you are the beginning and the end of all things. We praise you because you are uh, of God near. You are a God that today and forever. We praise you because you have guided your people to this new Jerusalem. We praise you, Lord. In the name, in the name of Jesus, amen. It's for you, my brothers. The voice of the Lord's angels. His angels are coming. This is the desire of our God. Most perfect love, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, holy is your name, God, hallelujah, glory to God, we praise you, God, we give you praises, we glorify your holy name, because we have the assurance that through the blood of Jesus, we enter through the gates of eternity, will be with the faithful praise you give you honors raising your name high up and thank you Lord for your great love that was given to our lives Lord we reiterate our gratitude to you Lord because one day your son Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for love of our lives Lord we adore you we don't have words to express Lord all our adoration, all our gratitude, Lord. And may this service, this service reach the, your throne of holiness as a, an offering of uh, sweet smell because only th that's the only thing that we can offer to you, Lord. Receive, Lord, as a way of uh, praise and gratitude that we have because you gave so much love to us. Bless your people, your church, your daughter that had not made a decision to walk in your presence. Lord, may your Holy Spirit at this moment visit her heart so that they may, she may feel this warmth, this power of the Holy Spirit. my children my peace is with you tonight I may you feel closer to heaven and I tell you that through doing every trial and tribulation and in every situation that happens you're closer to my eternity a little in a little while my children and, and what is about to happen will happen and I'll take many there here tonight and I want to tell you my son in your daily life they're maintaining those cars I have been visiting you do not reject this so great salvation that is presented to you tonight is a project of salvation for your entire house to your entire family if you make a definition tonight, you will see the power of God being manifested towards you. And to you also, my daughter, I've called you to live a so great salvation. And I tell you that that infirmity in one of your feet, I want to cure you still. And if you give yourself 
to me, you see my glory manifest in your life. Church, exalt my name. Sing songs. Exalt the King of your, the God of your salvation, because tonight, my eternity, you stop to hear your praises. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we say with the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of our good and eternal Father, and that suit and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon the people of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The brethren may sit down. And you, um, my brother and sister who are here tonight, you are welcome to this place. This place here, it does not belong to us. He belongs to you. He belongs to the God that we serve. And He has a call for our life. And He has called tonight. Accept this call. And have an eternal life with Him. If you desire prayer, an explanation of the word, of what you seen and heard tonight, Raise your hand and the brethren here are going to give you the proper assistance. We have service on Wednesday at 8 o'clock tonight of, of the night and on Thursday also at 8 o'clock and Saturday at 7.30 and Sunday morning at 10.30 in the morning and Sunday night at 7.30. You're invited to participate on all of them. Amen. If you need a prayer, just raise your hand and we will go towards you to give you the proper assistance.